السبب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته تقبل الله إن شاء الله your fasting and your duas and your prayers during these holy nights and tomorrow inshallah will be the grand night of Qadr inshallah ta'ala so we begin from sunset with the prayers inshallah Maghrib and Isha followed by Iftar and we will do the series of Quranic recitation if you can if you have a private copy of you your personal copy bring it with you a personal copy of the Quran because we're going to do um, several chapters Surat Al Ankabut, Al Rum, Al Dukhan, at least three chapters to, tomorrow, inshallah. Followed by, followed by uh, Dua Al Joshan Al Kabir, and after that, Dua Abu Hamza Al Thamali. Dua Al Joshan Al Kabir takes about an hour and a half. Dua Al Josh Al Abu Hamza Al Thamali. It will take about 50 minutes. And then, inshallah, we will do Salatul Layl, Tahajjud, and Dua al Sahar, many, many supplications to, tomorrow, inshallah. And then at 5.30, we will uh, perform Salatul Fajr. And inshallah, you go home and take, take Wednesday off. Take Wednesday off because you need to sleep after Fajr. Take two Wednesdays off. Wednesday after tomorrow because of Laylatul Qadr before and Wednesday April 10th because but uh, the day of Eid we finish the prayers by 9 a.m. so you can go to work inshallah we begin at 8 sharp we finish by 9 so you can go to work inshallah sallu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad <clears throat> والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا واتبعتهم ذريتهم بإيمان الحقنا بهم ذريتهم وما ألتناهم من عملهم من شيء كل امرئ بما كسب رهين صدق الله العلي العظيم There is an important question that many people ask when we speak about paradise and inshallah we're going to continue our series on paradise Tomorrow we dedicate tomorrow for Laylatul Qadr, the night of destiny. But after that, until the end of the month, we have many other sessions and episodes on the description of paradise in the Quran. Many people ask, are we going to join our families in paradise, the same family that exists here and they live here together, the same husband and wife? Are they going to continue their journey and stay. This marriage that you have here, is it going to continue in the hereafter or it ends? Many people wish for it to end, of course, to tell you the truth. But uh, this is unfortunately not the case. You are stuck with your spouse. spouse. Unless, unless God forbids they go two different directions, the wife, normally in paradise, we have to say, and the husband is somewhere else. In that case, in that case, then, of course, the relationship is going to terminate. There is another question. Many people have misconception that by death, marriage ends, and the wife becomes haram to her husband, so he cannot wash her body. This is not a true. This is not a true. The wife... And the husband, they do not become haram to each other after death. In fact, it is mustahab. God forbid. 
after death that the husband washes his wife. The priority goes to the husband to wash his wife's body or the wife to wash her husband's body. Then if they are not available, they cannot do it, they don't know how to do it, then others do. So this relationship of mahramiya to be halal to each other does not end by death. And therefore, therefore, after resurrection, are they still going to be a husband and wife? Yes, they are still going to be a husband and wife. But sometimes, though they are still a husband and wife, of course, if they die as husband and wife, but if they are divorced at the time of death, they are, they are no longer a husband and wife. But let's suppose they die. When they die or one of them dies, they were still married. So when they are resurrected, they are still a husband and wife. Before I answer this question, how many of you sincerely, how many of the ladies here you want to be with your husband in paradise? Raise your hand. How many? Alhamdulillah, 50% of you. How many of the gentlemen here, to be honest, if you are not afraid of your... Don't look, wives. Turn your face to the other side. How many of you want to be with your wife? Alhamdulillah, another 50%. Alhamdulillah. We give thanks to Allah. Oh, she told you, yeah. Plagiarism is not accepted. So many families, they really love each other. They grew together, the husband and the wife, days in and days out. They struggled together. They had good moments, beautiful moments, happy moments in their marriage, in their life. Sometimes they had sad, unfortunate incidents, so many of them, they really aspire to be with their spouses. They aspire to be with their spouses. Now, what does the Quran say about this? Are, are we going to be allowed to be not only with, with our spouses, but with our children, with our grandchildren, with our extended, with our parents? Are we going to be with them or not? There is a very important verse in the Quran. The verse in Surah At-Tur, Tur is chapter 52, the verse is 21. The verse says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ Those who believe, those who have faith in this life, and then they die, and whose progeny they followed them in faith in this life. They are a progeny their spouses, their children, their grandchildren, they followed them in, in faith in this life. What will happen to them? Al-Haqna, we shall cause their progeny and their family, Al-Haqna, to join them in the hereafter. Al-Haqna bihim, dhurriyatahum, wa ma alatnahum min amalihim min shay. We are not going to make them lose their credit, the good things that they produced and they did in this life. At the end, the Quran says something important. Every human being shall be held in a pledge for what he or she did in this life. What does this mean? It means at the end, it's not your relationship, blood relationship determines where you're going to go. It is your deed. It is your deed. So do not depend in, on, in this life to say, my father is such and such. He's a great man, a man of piety. So there, is, there shall be no worries on me tomorrow because my father is such and such. My mother is such and such. My husband is such. No. We hold you accountable for what you did, not for who you are. On the day of judgment, we lose our last names. Nobody is going to be called. Here, people recognize you by your last name. First, you put your last name, then you put your first name. Last name is important. On the day of judgment, on that form, there is no room for last name. They don't care 
which family you come from, which tribe, which family tree, whether you are Sayyid or non Sayyid, whether you are from the Middle East or the Indian subcontinent or North America or South America, they don't care. What they care is your deed. There, there is a lot of emphasis on, in the Quran on, on the deeds, our deeds. Our deeds count, not our relationships, not our blood, not our color, not our nationality, your deed. إِنَّمَا تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ تَعْمَلُونَ You're going to be rewarded or punished for what you did in this life. However, however, there is some discount. God gives some discount. There are some small exceptions. And the exception says that if your children, if your family, they did good to, but they did not do enough, not just like the, not like the father or the mother. They did below that. Let's say the father did 100%, his son did 70%, 60%. Or the wife did 100%, the husband did 80%, 70%. In this case, in this case, we would elevate them, elevate their ranks. We will give them some extra credit because of their spouses, because of their parents. See, in this verse, there are two important terms in this verse, in Surah At-Tur. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ اتَّبَعَتْهُمْ is important. اتَّبَعَتْهُمْ means what? Comes from what? From اتِّبَاعْ. اتِّبَاعْ means what? Following. The second one is الْحَقْنَا. الْحَقْنَا means what? Comes from الْحَاق. الْحَاق means what? Join them. Two important things. اتَّبَعَتْهُمْ اتِّبَاعْ اتِّبَاعْ There should be similarity between the tabi' and matbu' Between the follower and the one who is being followed They are similar in action, similar in status, similar in faith Therefore the Quran says وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ Your family has to be in the same line Matching you on the same path, on the same road. But if your family, it's in a different direction, 100, 180 degrees different. You are to the right and they are to the left. They did not follow faith here. So this is important. Ittaba'atum. The family, this family, the happy family that wants to be together there, they have, they have to have a common common journey, shared journey in this life. Not one of them says, I don't recognize Islam, I'm not a Muslim, I don't care about my parents, I don't care about God, I don't care about religion. That person, unfortunately, is not going to follow the parents. And I'm going to give you an evidence from the Quran. And one of the important evidence in the Quran is what? Where? A son who did not follow his father. Huh? Son of Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh was very keen, very keen. Every father, every biological father loves his son and his daughter. Every mother loves her daughter and her son. And therefore, Nuh is a, is a human being. He has atifa, atifa tul ubuwa. He has the emotions and the feelings of a father, biological father. And he kept running after his son. Please, please, son, I love you, son. Please join me. Please listen to me. The son was arrogant. The son, because he was corrupted by his mother. The mother has a big influence on her children. Big influence. She's not only giving them food and milk, nursing them milk. She's nursing them values and principles and manners. Sometimes these manners are terrible, sometimes are good. And this is why I keep telling the new generation, when you are 
shopping for a wife, be careful. Do not be overtaken by your emotions. Do not incorporate emotion in the matter of marriage. Don't. Keep emotions away. Use rationality. Use reason. See, if this person you are marrying, if this husband that you are marrying, you as a female, if you are marrying a husband, you as a male, if you are marrying a wife, are they going to be good parents to your children or careless? Are they going to be a good example for your children or terrible example? So Nuh, unfortunately, was running after his son, and the son, sarcastically, what did he say to his father? What did he say? Sa'awi ila jabanin, don't worry about me. I'm not going to drown. I'm going to go to the summit of the mountain, and I'll be safe. Sa'awi ila jabalin, ya'simuni min al ma. The father answered him. What did he say? Qala la asim al min amrillah. There is no rescue. There is no summit that can protect you. No protection from God's commands. No protection. Nothing can protect you. وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَ الْمُوْجِ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ Water divided the father and the son, and he was one of those who drowned من الْمُغْرَقِينَ Here, on the day of judgment, God is not going to take the son of Noah and say, Oh, Noah, you, you worked hard. You worked for 950 years. Because of these 950 years career that you produced and you gave for me, I'm going to take your son to paradise. No, it doesn't work here. The son insisted on rejecting God, insisted. And he was fully aware. And he had Inad, stubborn. This is a disease that many people have, especially young ones, stubbornness. In this case, they are not going to join their parents. But if they are on the same path, but they did not do enough, they didn't do enough. God says, we will elevate their status. Alhaqna bihim. Alhaqna, alhaqna, there is no common status between them, but we will give them some upgrade. Imagine one day you are flying with one of these airlines and your wife is with you and you have first class tickets. Maybe, maybe if the agent is Ibn Halal, you know, agent of United Airlines is Ibn Halal, maybe he will give you, give your wife also an upgrade because you have purchased a first class ticket. Maybe she would sit with you, and maybe not. So in this case, Allah says, those walladina amanu, those who did well, had faith in, in God. Walladina amanu wattaba'athum dhurriyatuhum bi iman. Their family followed them in faith. And notice here, did not say what tabaathum dhurriyatuhum bil iman. He said bi iman. Iman, not al iman. What's the difference between them? Yalla iman. What else? Let me simplify it for you. Iman, if we say iman, this is lit tenkir. This is an infinite noun. Tenkir, iman. But when we say al-iman, it's different. Al-iman, the faith, lit ta'zim, greatness. So God says they did not follow, follow them by al-iman. He didn't say al-iman, the greatness of faith. He said bi-iman, bi-iman. There is a big difference between them in Arabic grammar. Hmm? La. Huh? Ahsanti. Bi iman, wattaba'athum, their children followed parents with some level of faith, not the entire faith. Whereas if, if God says, wattaba'athum dhurriyatuhum bil iman, it means they followed them with full faith. 100%, A plus. But here children did not follow their, in this life, they did not follow their parents A+. They followed them 
70%, not A+. Plus. B minus, let's say, or C. Be imanin, with a level of faith, not with full faith. This is the difference. So kids did not do good, well, excellent here in this life. They were praying, fasting, honest, did not lie. But sometimes they do crazy things, for instance. They smoke. Huh? Sometimes. They do drugs, sometimes. You know. But they are honest. They are honest. Though they should not do drugs, they did not, should not smoke. Smoking is forbidden. Don't tell me Fulan Alim was smoking and Fulan Ayatollah, I saw him and my grandma. It's wrong. Wrong is wrong. And this wrong applies to all. The rules are unified. Whether we know, we don't know, we are scholars, we are lay people, it's, it's forbidden. Because it damages our health, period. No discussion about this. Damages. And the, and the hadith says, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. You may ask me, Sayyid, where is it in the Quran that smoking is, is, is? Allah says, do not destroy your health. The hadith says, do not destroy your health. لا ضرر. This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا ضرر. Do not, do not, do not do damage to yourself and others. Neither accept damage. Don't accept someone to damage you. Don't accept that. Don't succumb to the damage. La dharar, neither you do damage, nor you accept damage. La dharar wa la dharar. And smoking destroys. And we have to stop. We have to quit. And this is the month of Ramadan, teaches us how to quit. So what tabaatum dhuriyatuhum bi iman, the dhuriya, the children did not do good, did not do good enough, but we will, what will happen to them on the day of judgment? Huh? Al haqna bihim dhuriyatuhum. We will make their children and the wife in this case, or the husband in this case sometimes, to join the rest of the family in paradise. Okay. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, the hadith of the Prophet, إن الله سبحانه وتعالى يرفع ذرية المؤمن إليه في درجته وإن كانوا دونه في العمل. God on the day of judgment is going to elevate the ranks of the believers, the believers' family, the believers' progeny, the believers' spouse to the ranks of their parents, even if they have not performed enough, even if they did not perform good enough. But God will give them some upgrade, as long as they are on the right path. As I said, not that they are in the wrong direction. Wrong direction, the fate of the son of Nuh. Nothing is going to help them. Nuh could not help his son, Nuh. Nuh is a universal prophet, universal, one of the five Greatest prophets. Noah, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the book of Kafi, Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam says, قَصُرَتِ الْأَبْنَاءُ عَنْ عَمَلِ الْآبَاءِ فَأَلْحَقُ الْأَبْنَاءَ بِالْآبَاءِ لِتَقِرَّ بِذَلِكَ أَعْيُنُهُمْ Children did not do enough. So they stayed behind their parents in, 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 in work, in deeds, in faith. They stayed behind. They stayed behind. But God, out of his blessings and karam and generosity and love and bounties, he's going to join the kids with their parents to make the parents happy. Because when the mother goes to paradise and God forbids her son is not there, she's not going to enjoy. She's not going to enjoy. A father who sees his son is going somewhere else is not going to enjoy. Though, of course, when they enter paradise, they're going to forget all the pain and the suffering and the unfortunate incidents. But before that, the day of judgment, when the family are not standing in court to get together, they are scattered. The mother is going to be worried. So God for the sake of the good parents, righteous parents, 
is going to elevate the status of their children who did not do enough so they can join parents in paradise. And Surah Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the angels, Malaika, those who carry the arsh, the throne of God, they pray for the believers. What do they say? Rabbana wa jannati adnin allati wa'attahum. O Lord, make them enter the garden of Aden that you have promised them. وَمَنْ صَلُحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ With those who are righteous of their wives, of their children, of their progeny and offspring. وَمَنْ صَلُحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Now, we mentioned in the beginning that, inshallah, the husbands and the wives here who were faithful to each other, they loved each other, they're going to stay in paradise as couples, inshallah, yani married. But some, some spouses and some couples are going to be separated. Where is the example of that in the Quran? What chapter? What surah? What's the name of the surah? No. Surah Al-Tahreem, Prohibition, number 66 in this book. Surah Al-Tahreem, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا God presents a parable, an example, a story, but this is a, a fact. This is not a fairy tale. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا امْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَامْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ Two wives of two prophets, are not going to be with their husbands on the day of judgment. They're going to be separated. The husband goes to the right, they take their wives to the left, to Jahannam. This is not me, this is God. God presents a parable of those who, who disbelieved in him, despite knowing what is right and what is wrong. They were aware they are the wives of the prophets. They hear the revelation, they read the book, they are with their husbands 24-7, but they chose not to follow, not to follow. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَمْرَأَةَ لُوط The spouse of Noah and the spouse of Lut. كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ God said, God says they had a great opportunity to be righteous because they were under the guidance, the protection, the care of our most, most what? Virtuous servants, which is Nuh and Lut. Now, if someone, a stranger, does not believe, you don't be surprised. But the wife of the prophet who lives with him in the same house, she doesn't believe this is very shocking. What does this tell you? Tells you about something important that we have. God has given us this. Huh? It tells you, do we have freedom of choice or we don't have a freedom of choice? It says we have a freedom of choice. If we don't have a freedom of choice, the wife of Nuh and Lut, they should have been in paradise. They should have been believers because their husbands are believers. Their husbands are universal leaders, not just believers. Prophets, messengers. But because they had a freedom of choice, they rejected. They rejected, unfortunately. God is telling you their fate, meaning God is not going to change his mind on the day of judgment. If he changes his mind, he will say, we will see what we do with them tomorrow. But no, he said decisively. Enter hellfire with those who are going to enter hellfire. In this case, would Nuh feel sorry for his wife? Huh? He wouldn't. Lut, would he feel sorry for his wife? He wouldn't. Same thing with many husbands and wives. If they are different in faith. If the wife is virtuous and righteous and see she, she sees her husband going to Jahannam, she would clap for him. She says, you deserve. See, I told you. 50 years I am telling you, you are wrong. You don't listen to me. 
you deserve it. They are going to cheer that day, happy. Happy, this is their intiqam, okay? Event. In the same chapter 66, Surah Al-Tahreem, before the story of Nuh and Lut, let me read it for you. Before the story of Nuh and Lut, God speaks about <clears throat> other two ladies, two wives of the Prophet. In the same chapter, and God says to the, to, to the Prophet, In tatuba ila Allahi faqat sagat qulubukuma. Two wives of the Prophet who did not do well. God says they didn't do well. If the entire Muslim ummah, they say, radiyallahu anhunna wa ardahun may, God says, no, I'm not going to be pleased. So don't waste your time saying radiyallahu anha. Don't waste your time. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself out of a prejudice, out of bias, out of ignorance, out of arrogance. You say, may God forgive them. God is not going. God is saying here, listen to God. Listen, this is Quran. This is Quran. This is chapter 66, Surah Al-Tahreem. God says, "In tatuba ila Allahi faqat sagat qulubukuma." If after you committed this grave sin against the Prophet, if you get a chance to repent, then for your hearts did certainly shift away from religion. Sagat qulubukuma. Sagat means shifts away from faith. You didn't do good. This is the Quran. Sagat qulubukuma. So you cannot say this person is perfect. No, God says he's not perfect. He's not perfect. Sagat qulubukuma. Shifted away from faith. You committed a sin. Wa in tabahara alayh. If you want to continue to conspire, tabahara means to conspire against the Prophet. Fa inna Allah. Allah is not going to leave his Prophet alone. God is going to defend him. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ God is going to be his protector, the protector and the defender of the Prophet. وجبريل, Archangel Gabriel. وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The righteous of the believers, not the idiots, the righteous who have intelligence. They're going to stand with God and Jibreel. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ظَهِيرًا And all the angels are going to back the Prophet ظهيرًا and stand with him and support him. So the Prophet is not going to be alone. And then after that, look at the threat here. Very serious. If the Prophet divorce you, divorces both of you, don't worry, the Prophet is not going to be abandoned. God would replace him with wives better than you two. Better, khayran minkun. So they are not the best among the wives of the Prophet. Khayran minkun. This is the wording of the Quran. Do you want me to reject the Quran and believe Abu Huraira? Huh? I wouldn't do that. I believe in God. I believe in this book. I don't believe in an, a fabricated hadith which was fabricated during the time of Bani Umayyah. I don't believe in these hadiths. I toss them in the trash. They have no value. Because this is what God says. God threatens them with divorce. And God says, if, I, if the Prophet divorce you, I will replace him with women who are much better than you. خَيْرًا مِنْ كُنَّ مُسْلِمَاتٍ مُؤْمِنَاتٍ قَانِتَاتٍ تَائِبَاتٍ عَابِدَاتٍ سَائِحَاتٍ ثَيِّبَاتٍ وَأَبْكَارًا There are many women who are better than you. God is going to replace the Prophet. This means... At the end of the day, that if you are the wife of a prophet, but you did not do good, would that help you on the day of judgment? It would not help. Don't tell me I was the wife of the prophet for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You are the wife of the prophet, provided that you do good. Then you join him. And therefore the prophet, this is Ibn Sa'd. Ibn Sa'd al-Basri one of the most senior narrators of hadith in the Sunni tradition. Most senior, because he was born in Basra in 168, and he died in Baghdad in 222. And he lived during the time of Ma'mun al-Abbasi. 
مامون العباسي was the time of إمام موسى بن جعفر عليه السلام موسى الكاظم إمام محمد الجواد okay uh, before him إمام علي الرضا during that time this this transmitter of hadith in his book which is very famous in the Sunni tradition الطبقات الكبرى الطبقات he analyzes the life and the legacy of the companions of the Prophet, those who were with the Prophet, his wives, his companions. He says, one day the Prophet said to his wives, he was sitting among his wives, and he said to them, the wives, they would continue asking their husband, the Prophet, are we going to be with you in paradise? You are the greatest the Prophet. Are we going to be in the same house? Or maybe lower than you? Maybe in a different, maybe we cannot even have access to you. So he answered them. He said, anyone among you who fears God, number one, taqwa. Ittaqatillaha ta'ala. Taqwa, she practices piety and righteousness and reverence for God. وَلَمْ تَأْتِ بِفَاحِشَةٍ مُبَيَّنَةٍ She does not commit an immortal and uh, she, she just does not commit an immoral and shameful act. وَلَزِمَتْ ظَهْرَ حَصِيرِهَا She stays indoor after my death. She doesn't leave her house to commit mischief in the, in the, in the society. Or she wages a war against Imam Ali. The Battle of Kamel where the Jamal where 25,000 people died. 25,000 people died. Because of a lady who said, I hate this man Ali. We have to. And she traveled all the way from Medina to Basra. All the way. With two of a misleading people, Talha and Zubair with her. And she created a disaster in the history of Islam. A disaster. وَلَزَمَتْ ظَهْرَ حَصِيرِهَا She stays indoor at home that lady is going to be my wife in paradise another hadith sharh ibn abi al-hadid al-mu'tazili he says um salama a good wife of the prophet reminded lady aisha and she said to her aisha before you leave to fight ali ibn abi talib i am going to remind you of an incident happened during the time of the prophet and you were present and i was present and other wives were present when the prophet forewarned us hadharana rasulullah forewarned us he said he said one of you is going to slip from the sirat on the day of judgment and then the prophet touched your shoulder, he said to you, Iyaki takuni haya humayra. Be careful, do not be that wife, that lady who's going to slip from the sirat on the day of judgment. Slips. And when you slip, where do you fall? Huh? Irvine spectrum? Where? Jahannam. Jahannam. Someone who slips from sirat immediately in Jahannam. The Prophet said to her, Be careful not to be. Do you remember this incident? Aisha said, yes, I do remember this incident. And she wanted to go back. But Talha and Zubair came to her. She said, they said, no, 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 you have a mission. We have an army. We have to fight this man. She was misled by them. So my friends, at the end, some people are going to join their spouses. Others are not going to join their spouses. Some families are going to be united in the Akhirah as they are united here. Most likely, if we are united in faith, in deeds, in belief, in goodness, in this life, we're going to be united there and live together in the same neighborhood, inshallah. But if, if each one of them has different path, one of them is a believer, the other are non-believers, most likely they are, they are not going to join together there. Now, one last question. Before I conclude, and we prepare for tomorrow, Laylatul Qadr. How many wives, someone asked me the other night here. He could not ask me in public because he was afraid of his wife. 
So he asked me in the lobby. He said, Sayyid, how many wives one can marry in paradise? Hmm? How many? One? Some people say one. Some people say as many as they want. Okay, how many husbands a wife can marry in paradise? How many husbands she can have? No, that's it. Huh? One? So one. Unity, one. Allah wahid, God is one. Wife is one. Husband is one. Suppose someone does not want, he says, my wife is elderly now. She's believer, good, but now she's 78 years old. I don't want to marry her. Are they going to be joined together? Both of them are elderly. Ahsanti. They're going to be young. So don't worry if your wife is old, she lost her teeth, you know. No, so, so there is good cosmetic Surgery is there, inshallah. Before they enter paradise, there is a river. They take a bath in that river and they come back young, inshallah. One day, let me conclude with this story. A very old lady, Ajuz. Ajuz means old lady. See, she came to the Prophet. And usually the people used to say this to the Prophet. Young, old, men, women. She said, Ya Rasulallah, ud'ullaha ta'ala li bil jannah. Please, God does not reject your prayers. When you ask him, pray that Allah takes me to paradise. The Prophet said to her, you don't know that old ladies, they do not go to paradise? So she was crying. Literally, she was crying. The Prophet said to her, listen, listen, don't worry. You are not going to go to paradise as an old lady. You're going to regain your freshness, alhamdulillah, become young, and then you enter paradise. So inshallah, all of you, no worries about how you look, you know. If you could not afford plastic surgery here, no worries. There, inshallah, it's a free of charge. And I'll answer this question about how many spouse you can have after Layali al-Qadr, inshallah ta'ala, when we speak about Hur al-Ain and Wildan al-Mukhalladun in paradise, because there are many Many passages, many verses, they speak about the gifts of Hurul Ain and Wildan al Mukhaladun. Allahumma khfar al Mu'minina wal Mu'minat, wal Muslimina wal Muslimat, al Ahya imanhum wal Ammat, Tabi Allahumma bainana wa bainahum bil khayrat, in the Kamujibu dawat, in the Kagafur al Khatiat, in the Kamahis Sayyat, wa Jail wa Hassanat, Allahumma taqabbal salatana, wa Siyamana, wa Qiyamana, wa Quranana, wa Duaana, wa Stikfarana. في هذا الشهر العظيم وجعلنا من عتقائك من النار وأدخلنا الجنة وعجل في فرج إمامنا وسيدنا صاحب العصر والزمان. We pray for the people of Gaza every single day, every single night, please. Don't forget the people of Gaza, the West Bank, Palestine, Southern Lebanon. Don't forget them from your du'as every single night, every single night when you stand because those are us. Those are our families. And also we pray for Syria and Damascus. Those are our family. Every day when I read a story, today I read a story of a bright lady, dentist, mother, daughter. She's a memorizer of the whole Quran. To be a dentist and to memorize of the, whole, the Holy Quran, it's not easy. 33 years old, she was killed by Israel. She was killed with her two daughters, with her two daughters. These stories are repeated every single day, every single day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them victory upon their vicious enemy and to destroy this vicious enemy who is merciless, who has no faith, faithless and merciless. وعجل اللهم في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنين.